With so much technology available to us as worship leaders, it's important to find equipment that works for us, doesn't overcomplicate, but simplifies and streamlines what we do. In this video, I wanna talk about a piece of equipment that I've started using that does just that for me. And uh, we're, we're gonna talk about the Akai MPK Mini, Mini controller in this video. My name is Peter. Thanks for joining me at Our Worship Sound, where we're working to make worship technique and technology easier. One of the things I've done for a long time is supplement my main keyboard uh, with some extra MIDI control uh, with an Akai LPD-8. And it has eight drum pads that I can use for different purposes and eight uh, knobs that I can use for uh, anything that I want as well. Um, but I also uh, run a program called Ableton Live. And for that, I would use uh, MIDI keys on a keyboard to trigger different loops and tracks. And so at some point, instead of having two pieces of gear with a 25 key keyboard and an LPD-8, I decided to go with an Akai MPK MIDI that basically combines the same functionality as an, uh, an LPD-8 with 25 keys. So I can run everything that I need to control in main stage and everything that I need to control in Ableton Live in one piece of gear instead of two. So to get this set up, what I had to do is you have to open up the uh, MPK, MPK Mini editor. And then what you do is you program the drum pads to uh, specific MIDI notes. Uh, it could be an A or A sharp or B, C, C sharp, and that kind of thing. But you give it a note and you program it, uh, and then you can make sure your knobs are set up the way um, they want to function as well. Uh, I did find the, the MPK to be a little bit finicky when I was working with it, whereas the LPD-8 was just um, really straightforward and you would set a note and it would you would upload and program it. And I had to do a little bit of trial and errors. Uh, and not just with this one, but with a couple of other uh, MPKs that, that I've used in other uh, situations. So it is a little bit goofy, but once you get that, you don't really have to mess with that. And I haven't probably opened this MIDI editor um, or this MPK editor in probably over a year now. So once you get it set up, you just kind of run with it. And then you want to get your templates set up in main stage and Ableton or whatever software you're using to just work with it and you don't have to mess with it on a weekly basis. So um, let me show you how I have this set up first with Ableton. Um, I set up five scenes per song and I use the uh, the session view as opposed to the arrangement view. And what I'll do is I'll take, uh, for for example, this one is um, Our God's Reigns Forever. Uh, and this is a, a multi-tracks um, recordings or backing tracks. So I pull that in there. Uh, I've got the full track there. Uh, I've got another scene set up to start at the bridge. So I can start it that way, and then the final choruses, and then uh, just, a, just a loop. Okay, so I can use that at any point. Um, the way I have it set up on this is I, is I start uh, one song uh, here, another one here on this C, and then this F as well. So it's either starting on a C or an F. And I use the, uh, well, on this keyboard, the colors are reversed, but uh, a traditionally white key and a traditionally black key, and then uh, five keys total. So what I'll do is I'll set up this one. Let me start the click. Uh, you won't hear that in the video because I'm not recording it, but there's a metronome going right now. And this will start the tempo. And then this one, I set up to start the full track. This one sets up kind of uh, a, the first flex point so I could go back to the bridge if I wanted to. And then this is just another point that I can kind of pick up in the song. This is programmed as a stop button. Uh, let me show you this. So this is the stop clips button. So it will stop the playback at the next measure, but it will keep the metronome going. And you can see uh, up in this corner, the metronome is still going. Um, let's keep going. So that's how I set up that first one um, where it has other instruments and it just kind of goes through different sections of the song. And then for the other ones, I just have loops set up with a soft, medium, loud and then kind of an end or maybe a, a bridge type of loop but just different dynamic levels of the loops okay and uh, all I do to set that up is I set up a, a template that I start from every week I just do command M and then I go through and uh, I'll click a scene and then click the key on the keyboard um, to set that up and so then I can just press those keys to trigger those different scenes. Okay, so, and then along with that, uh, I've actually set up Ableton to work along with MainStage, and I have another video that I'll link to that shows uh, how these connections are made, but I set this up to trigger patch changes within within uh, MainStage as well. 
So for example, when I start this loop uh, for the anthem, it sets up main stage to go to the first patch that I have for anthem. And um, there's another video that walks through that process, like I said. Um, and then I go to the medium loop for anthem. So we're now on the medium setting for anthem. And we're also on a medium dynamic level over here. Okay. So uh, I can change different uh, patches from Ableton. And uh, I can also trigger those patch changes within main stage. So for further control within main stage, I have a consistent setup with how I do this. And, and the way I do this is I set up all of these uh, knobs and drum pads to work within main stage. So I've got uh, a pad here that I can, uh, I've mapped to go to the previous patch, to the next patch, and then a panic button, which actually I've set up as a, a stop, because that seems to work a little bit better. And then if I want to tap a tempo out, I can do that. Uh, for these drum, or for these uh, knobs rather, the way I've set it up is, well, let me uh, click on here. So let me go down to this patch. I have four different sounds happening. Let me turn all these down and you can hear how this works. So the top row of knobs I have set up for volume. This is the volume for the piano. This is the volume for the pad. This is the volume for kind of a brighter layer going on. And this is the volume for an arpeggiated sound. Okay. In addition to that, I have this control to, uh, to set up to control the effects on the piano. This knob is set up uh, below the pad volume. This is set up to control the filter cutoff frequency. Okay, and then I have a couple other knobs to play with if I want to. So um, that's how I have that set up for main stage and Ableton on this MPK MIDI. Uh, you can definitely use this to just play uh, on its own. You can definitely use the keys to play sounds. Um, that's just not how I typically use it. But sometimes I'll occasionally be, you know, I want to maybe just work in front of the TV or something like that so I can unplug this, just plug it in via USB, and then I have a, a keyboard that I can work with and just play through the computer um, anywhere that I go. If you're interested in that, that's the Akai, A-K-A-I, M-P-K Mini. Uh, and you can get that uh, most anywhere. Um, so look that up. Uh, I recommend it. Uh, and the LPD-8 is great as well. If you don't need the keys, the Akai LPD-8 is awesome. Uh, so check those out. It just... In general, find things that work for you and that you can kind of generate a system around them that it doesn't take a long time to set up and it doesn't take a lot of time to think about um, what you need to do to control your sound. So I hope that helps. Check out some of the other videos that are available through Our Ship Sound and uh, we'll see you soon.